Previously on Bob's Crab House. All right, so here we are. This is part two of the first drop. Uh, we've got Rocky, who's uh, really ripping that bait out there. And then we've got Dungy. We've got another Dungeness. We'll call the first guy Tony for Tony Dungy. Football coach. He looks like he is just meditating right now. He was scratching a barnacle off his back before. Um, the Red Rock kind of bullied him out of... Ooh, look at that alien. Look how cool their mouth parts are. So he's... What he's doing, he's using his mouth parts to clean off his eye stalks and then those little sensor organs he has in his face. But totally like, just like, um, not alien, like Predator. Uh, like the Predator dude. Uh, so... We st so we got one Red Rock, one... Uh, now he's doing Tai Chi. I don't know what that Dungeness is doing. Red Rock's making it rain. And so what he's doing, that's mackerel. So uh, what I normally used as my uh, bait in crab pots before was either if I had fish heads or fish carcasses around, I'd do that. If not, our local supermarket has a special bait freezer uh, where they sell out-of-date chicken and stuff as crab bait. And it's still like four bucks a pound or something. Uh, it's kind of ridiculous. And it really stinks. It sticks up the freezer and everything else. So I've been looking for something that's kind of cleaner. Even when you have fish heads and carcasses, uh, you know, if they're in your freezer, they still kind of stink it up no matter how much you wrap them up. Then you have them on the boat and you're defrosting them and they start dripping all over the boat or over the dock. So I wanted to try something cleaner. So these are cans of chub mackerel. I got them for like, I don't know, they're like, 95 cents a can and it's the size of two two cans of tuna two normal cans wow look at that so that's a lot of bait you can see the bait being carried down current so that's another reason to have the camera if I can make it land to up current so we could see what's happening down current because you figure there's got to be a lot of stuff attracted to this so anyway so it's chub mackerel and then I figured out this system where I kind of stand on the on the line attached to the crab trap harness and I lower it partially over the side of the boat. I've got it opened up on the side and the bait box open and then I can just uh, you know open the can with can opener. Uh, nothing spills in the boat. Everything's hanging over the side and I just drop it in the bait cage, close that up, close the pot up and then it goes over. No muss, no fuss. Now I don't know what the dungeon is. He's, oh I see he's shadow boxing. He's, I see, he's psyching himself up to take on the Red Rock, I think. Oh, yeah. Left, left hook, left hook, left hook. And, uh, oh, we got somebody else coming in. That's a fish. <laughs> on the right side, we've got a hard-headed, is that a baby ling cod? So we got, well, maybe he's gone away. But that's very cool. That was a, so we've seen some herring, oh. Uh, no, he's back. We've seen some herring swim by. Okay, that's a sculpin. Uh, very cool. So he's been attracted by the bait. And I guess maybe he can't fit inside the trap. But there should be plenty of that mackerel going downstream for him and for anybody else who wants to come by. And I kind of feel good about it because the, you know, that out-of-date chicken and stuff, the reason people can't eat it because it starts to you know get filled with bacteria would make us sick not that these guys don't have different uh digestive systems than we do but still this is this is already straight out of the can it's human grade food so any female crabs that get in there any small juvenile crabs that get in there any fish like this sculpin who's still trying to get in but dungeon's saying hey maybe the red rock kicks my butt but i'm not letting you in anyway the, anybody whoa look at him shoveling it in Oh, yeah, those predator mouth parts. Yum, 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 yum. Yum, yum, yum. Hey, get out of here. Hey, hey. Oh, okay. So the uh, that sculpin did get in. Whoop. Oh, he just looked like he went after a piece of kelp. But anyway, so, uh, you know, we release any crabs that aren't going to be eaten, obviously. And uh, so the worst that they had is the... Uh, they got a nice meal of uh, chub mackerel. So again, it's less than a buck a can. 
and uh, so far it seems to be working. We are, where's my timeline? Let me see how far we are in on this. Uh, buh, buh, buh. Just learn how to, okay, here we are. We're 16 minutes in. Okay, so I'm gonna run this for maybe four more minutes. And now again, the one thing I know about this drop is how many crabs were in it. Oh, here we go. Hey, the dungeoness stood up for himself. The shadow boxing, the exercise helped. Still that red rock with those monster claws was able to push him off. Ooh, that's a that's a good shot. It's amazing how they can use those claws with such dexterity. Like tweezers to pick up those tiny things. You think that they would just be kind of brute force, but uh they're pretty good. Oh, look at that. So the dungeness that you can see closest to us, look at the barnacle on his back. You can actually see the barnacle feeding. So barnacles are related to these crabs. They're actually crustaceans. And there's that sculpin trying to get in again. Uh, the barnacles are crustaceans that glue themselves head first onto a hard piece of substrate usually a rock, but also uh, the shells, the hardened shells of crabs. So he's, oh, we've got another red rock. Another red rock coming in. How's this red rock going to get? Uh, yeah, no, thank you. No, yep. Yeah, no, no, we're good. We're good. Uh, here, let me hold this door for you. There you go. Um, oh, he's still going to try to come in. So, yeah, so that barnacle is head down glued onto that shell and what you can see are his feet they're modified into like feathers and they filter feet hey oh, he's coming in i guess the other red rock's gonna let him go come on oh no 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 get out of here um more for me so yeah so that barnacle you can still see him those are called feather feet and he's just sweeping uh for plankton and i guess he's gonna get a uh, face full of mackerel as well uh, so we got the third crab coming in. Oh, uh, yeah. I don't know. See, but this current, it's really interesting to me. That's why I'd love for the camera to be up current because, I don't know, are there five or six crabs that are outside the trap that are just eating all the, the bait that's being scattered? So that's something I want to test. Is it better to have a bait that kind of stays in one piece but they can taste? Or is this drawing more crabs from further and further downstream so maybe it's more effective we'll find out we'll see if maybe if that other crab doesn't come in then that'll be a hint towards that but no he wants in even though you can see all that bait oh yum yum oh this guy's pretty smart he's oh maybe the dungeon is gonna try and stop him so this is really interesting. I mean, that's a dynamic for how many crabs you're going to catch, right? If they're fighting to keep each other out, then maybe you catch one big aggressive crab and you've got 20 that are around your pot, but they're not getting in because of this guy. So maybe that's that could be another reason. So my theory is that if you pull them up more frequently with shorter soaks, you're going to get more legal crabs. And maybe that's part of it. Um, you can see that current. You can see the kelp whipping by. Because um, so far, it looks like these guys are keeping that other crab out of there. But I know... Oh, yeah, yeah. He's just sticking a leg in to grab... Oh, no. Here comes the big claw. Oh, he wants in. He wants in. It's also interesting that he went right... Seemed to go right towards the door. So, oh, yeah, look at the top. Look at that top red rock. He's got a big chunk. I'm amazed he can get those big claws in there to rip. Or maybe he's just got a leg inside the can that's pulling out that uh, that mackerel. But the red rock's definitely going to town. If it tilts up a little bit more, that might be a female. Oh, now we even got the sculpin over there trying to help the second red rock get in. All right, I think we're at 10 minutes. I don't know. This seems short. You guys let me know. Uh, seems like we're just getting into some action. And again, the only thing I know about this is I know how many crabs came up at the end. So I know there's going to be a lot more stuff. Um, but was it these crabs <laughs> who were in first? Did they stay in the whole time? Wow, look at this stuff coming off. There's got to be a trick. 
Oh, now I hear another crab trying to eat the camera. If one of these crabs does eat the camera, or at least rips it off of the mount I made for it, then this will be the shortest series of all time. Um, because I am not, it's not worth doing this again, but you can hear those, that sound is a crab behind the camera. So we know we have at least four, and wait, is that another one? Five, so I think we've got five crabs. All right, I'm gonna stop it for now. Next episode will be, oh, now he's even moving the camera. If, <laughs> if there's enough, oh yeah. He's trying to rip the camera off. And here comes Red Rock. Going to be a fight. All right. Tune in for 1.3. Maybe I'll have to run these things a little longer. All right. Stay tuned. Oh, hey, hey, get out of here.